the Photo X 1.5 to FX and welcome back to another video. Well, it's a little bit of a dressed up moment as you can see, but more about that later. But anyway, this is, marks the third installment of this little NASA slash Hasselblad series of uh, videos. So you can see at uh, Pride Center Place we have the ELM, <laughs> the Hasselblad ELM camera that takes center stage for this one. And uh, it is currently configured with a Distagon 50mm f4 lens and the 90 degree viewfinder, prism viewfinder with diopter control. Uh, this is actually the closest you can get to the space shuttle era uh, camera that was used during the space shuttle era, but uh, uh, yeah, the difference is that the Space Shuttle crews used the 70mm film back, which extended quite a bit uh, on the back of the camera, and that meant that they used a, a similar 90 degree viewfinder, but the difference was it had a longer tube section up here in order to compensate for the bigger film back. But actually, uh, we're gonna start this show on the road here with... Uh, Taking out the cheat sheet, but first of all, a little bit of coffee. We're back to Yvalia, so it's back to the good stuff. <sighs> Lovely. But anyway, the bag is back, and uh, we have the patent pendant, pun intended, uh, cheat sheet. And uh, this one is gonna start out with a little bit of a discovery that I managed to do. Yeah, I like the space shuttle. Uh, but <clears throat> anyway. If you are in the market to get a more accurate representation of the camera that was used by NASA during the Apollo uh, era, there is actually one that I managed to find in an old book about Hasselblad photography. And this camera was basically a direct carryover to the civilian market of the Apollo era cameras, but it's actually a kind of an unknown Hasselblad model. I haven't heard of it personally before, and probably there are some <clears throat> anoraks out there who know about it uh, from before, but I didn't. And it is the Hasselblad Mark 70 aerial camera. Picture of it up here. This camera was basically a civilian EL, uh, 500EL data that was used by NASA during the Apollo era. Also another camera that has been a little bit hit and miss uh, if it was really a Hasselblad that was used during the space flights or not is this yellow contraption. It's the Hasselblad MKWE and I don't really know what that acronym stands for but uh, if you know out there in YouTube land just please put it in the description or the comment section below. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this uh, uh, installment is not going to be so much about the Hasselblad camera but a little bit about some books that I've been able to find on the subject that I would really recommend to anybody who is into these types of cameras and the related photography. So first of all, let's see if I can get it up here. Yes, it's uh, the, Hasselblad Way, the Hasselblad Way by H. Freitag. Uh, this is a comprehensive guide uh, of the Hasselblad system and its history. So yeah, I'm probably gonna do some B-roll of it up here when I go through it a little bit. But the main thing is that this goes over tips and tricks, techniques, and the different cameras in the system uh, from the time this book was printed. And let's see if we can find when that was. Uh, let's see here. 19 set. Uh, Focal Press Limited, 19, copyright 1978. So it is an old book by any stretch of the imagination, but it really goes through all the accessories and so on that are, uh, you know, related to the Hasselblad system. Yeah, I know I'm gonna obscure it a little bit, but we have a few books in the way here now. Uh, second of all, the book that I actually found this uh, information about the Mark 70 camera, Let's see if I can fish them out here. You might have seen those uh, Hasselblad magazines uh, that talks about different forms of photography. Well, these might not look that much for the world, but these two are actually the compilation package uh, for those uh, 
those magazines. These are called Hasselblad Photographing or Hasselblad Photographing or photogra Photographing. And these uh, books are basically uh, compilation guides uh, from all the types of photography that Hasselblad intended for you to use with the camera. So uh, you have all types like industrial photography, uh, let's see what we have more just to put some example you have you know wildlife you have sports you have landscapes and so on these books are in swedish but uh, and also yeah here is a nice thing it's uh, medical photography among amount among other things i don't know how much uh, you know uh, uh, reflex uh, reflex you're going to get from the studio lighting but anyway these two books contains a lot of different types of photography that you can use for uh, use the Hasselblad system and it also is both for the professional and the happy-go-lucky amateur but these uh, books do have a really good comprehensive uh, factory recommendations for different types of photography and the equipment uh, that was uh, you know, recommended by the manufacturer to be used in the same type of photography. So yes, um, really interesting stuff and so on. And uh, yeah, what should we take out next? This is the big book in this series. Uh, let's see if I can get it here. You might have seen this person in some of my other videos uh, when I talked about this in previous installments. And it's this big one. Uh, the human in space would probably be the uh, correct, uh, ex, uh, you know, uh, translation. Kriste uh, Fugelsang, Människan i rymden, from Sputnik to Mars. And this is actually kind of an interesting book for all Swedish uh, space enthusiasts. Uh, it follows, or rather, it is a comprehensive uh, history about manned and unmanned spaceflight. And uh, the book's author is uh, Sweden's only uh, Euronaut, or ESA astronaut, or Euronaut as it's called, uh, Christer Fugelsang, who was actually on board uh, STS missions 116 and STS 128. So twice uh, space flight, uh, you know, two space flights and um, Sweden's only Euronaut so to speak, yeah. So really interesting book uh, when it comes to space flight and so on. And uh, finally, uh, we are gonna have a little bit of the look of a book that I have shown you before. And it is an autobiography and it is Failure is, Failure is Not an Option uh, by Gene Krantz, uh, the NASA flight director. He was played in the movie Apollo 13 by Mr. Ed Harris. And this is a really interesting book about the development of mission control or flight control during the NASA flights. So it basically goes from the early Mercury missions uh, to Apollo and beyond, as it says it. From missions, mission control from Mercury to Apollo 13 and beyond by Gene Kranz. Really interesting read uh, and really good uh, piece of trivia, you know, for space enthusiasts. Yeah, but anyway, why is then also the dress up and so on? Well, it turns out that this is going to be a little bit of a compilation video because I have recently broken the 600 subscriber mark here on YouTube, which I think is completely awesome. Uh, I never thought that when I started this channel that uh, I would get to that milestone. I mean, uh, when I started out, I didn't really know what to do with this channel. I did dabbled in some music and some other stuff and some other electronics and hobby related uh, areas. But now I think I found my niche, so to speak, in photography. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's uh, just uh, thank you all for subscribing and enjoying these videos. So basically, that's a little bit of it for this video, a little bit of book reviews or overviews. We're going to probably have some B-roll of them running here. But uh, 
All in all also, I'm gonna put it out a little bit that this entire ensemble, except for the pants, uh, are from uh, Mirona, the aunts, uh, which I have talked about many a times before. But this is the first time I've actually gotten clothes from them. And it, I didn't really spend that much on this little ensemble. Let's see here, I just actually wrote it down. The tie is Polo by La Ralph Lauren. Uh, it was a 125 Swedish kroner or 11 euros. The shirt is from Edge. I think they're made in Estonia or something, 100% cotton. And it was 39 Swedish kroner. I'm just gonna open up this uh, jacket is a bit hot actually it's 100% uh, pure wool and speaking of the jacket it is Pendleton and uh, made in Portland Oregon if I don't remember yeah hi it wears some wool Pendleton Portland Oregon 100% virgin wool yeah a little bit of a nice uh, jacket in my opinion <laughs> a little bit retro but uh, that's all the rage now if I am not mistakenly mistaken <clears throat> uh, but uh, anyway this uh, jacket cost me about 99 Swedish kroner which is 9 euros and 10 European cents so um, the total I spent on this was 263 Swedish kroner, which uh, translate roughly to 24 euros and 20 European cents. And uh, yeah, a little bit of space trivia for you as well. Uh, the accessory of the day now, the Fisher original space pen. And I thought that that is something I need to have if I'm gonna do it. If I'm gonna do this type of NASA cap compilation or NASA Hasselblad, what better to use than the original space pen. This is the Fisher AG7 space pen and uh, I'm gonna put a comprehensive uh, history on this pen in the uh, in the comment section below. So yeah, that's uh, all for me for now and uh, as always this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX and I'd like to see you guys in the next video and as a special thank you for 600 plus subscribers and I'd like to see you in the next one and I'm looking forward to the 600 coming subscribers, hopefully. We, well, we will see. But anyway, this is all for me for now and as always, Please like, share, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. So take care from now on. Bye.